Hey guys and welcome to another Top Taylor Gaming YouTube video. Um, it's been a while since I've done a video like this. It's just been so, so busy. Um, as a lot of you know, who uh, I chat to frequently through the YouTube channel or on Facebook. Um, I had the Scar and the Cheshire, which was the GBHL, uh, which is the Hobbit League um, league opener event which I ran uh, here in Altrigham. And it was a massive success, so I just want to say thank you to everyone that came. But ever since that weekend, I've not had a day off um, up until today. I was off today. And I was able to meet up with Top Table J um, and get a few things planned, film a few things, which was great. Um, and I decided um, that I would do a tutorial video on how to convert your Iron Hills captains to be mounted on a goat. Now a lot of you who are on the GBHL uh, Facebook group will have seen pictures of this um, and it just so happens that Jay is building the Nine Hills Goat Army uh, which is going to be awesome. Um, he's, he's got a stupid amount of goat riders and um, he's asked me to do some conversions for him so there'll be conversions for like those um, captains uh, Dwelling on a goat and Thorin on a goat. Um, he's just waiting on some spare Dwelling and Thorin minis to arrive. So until then, I said I'd convert these for him, and I thought I may as well make a video um, on how I did it. Really straightforward, really easy. Um, minor, minor uh, green stuff work, which I think uh, if you've never used green stuff before or any modelling putty, you've been thinking about it. It's, it's one. It's a good model to have a go at because the technique that we use is is quite basic, and I mean. Don't think you're going to get it perfect, you know, turn one. But if you keep trying and keep working at it, you will. Um, and the beauty of green stuff is, although it does set quite hard, um, if you're not happy with it, you can remove it and start again once it's dry. But I think you'll be all right if you stick to this uh, tutorial. Um, I think you'll, you'll you'll end up with a good result. So, without further ado, let's get over to the desk and crack on. So, guys, here we are at the desk. Uh, just. A little bit of an overview of things that you may need uh, for this conversion. You're going to need, uh, let's start with the glue, super glue, or wh whichever kind of um, glue that you're using to bond your models together. I tend to use this mitre fast, and this comes with um, an accelerator spray which you can spray on one surface but glue on the other. And it makes the glue set instantly on contact, which is handy if you try to save time so you're not you know, stood there for 60 seconds or whatever holding things together. Um, Hobby saw or jeweler's saw, these are really handy for cutting your miniatures. You can use your snips but it's quite untidy, it's a lot neater with a hobby saw. Again as we mentioned, snips, just for taking little edges off and things like that, always come in handy, always have snips on my desk. Um, an X-Acto knife, or scalpel blade, hobby knife, whatever you want to call it or whichever one you use, just make sure that your blade is really really sharp. Um, you know. Don't use a blunt, blunt blade for conversions because you just end up ruining your models. Um, medium tip clay shaper for green stuff work. Green stuff. I use this tool uh, for this particular conversion. It's just got some pointed tips on it. Comes in handy for uh, putting detail in your putty once it's been done. Then obviously your subject models. This model's actually been undercoated. It's uh, going to use this one for the conversion for the captain. Um, and we'll move into the conversion itself. But before I do that, we have a few conversions that I've done in the past that you may have seen. Um, let's try and get these close up on the camera. This was done from the uh, Weathertop and Sewell Aragon. I did two of these. Uh, one where he's chopping down, which is this one, and one where he's swinging from around the back. Really good. Another Aragorn, done a lot of Aragorns. This is one of my favourites. Show Aragorn shooting a bow, and this was from the Helm's Deep Aragorn. This idea was not my own, stole it. This is a whip. From one of the lads from the Australian Hobbit community. Really like the fact that he used um, the Wonderbad conversion sprue. These are just a few I've grabbed off my shelf. I've got loads. I think I've done a video for this one. 
people who, like myself, wanted to use the uh, vast array of Moria Goblin units for your Goblin Town because we were quite, um, well, quite scarce, aren't they? Uh, reinforcements, and you could make uh, Goblin Marauders using Goblin Town, it would look really cool. Right, the Pelamonor conversion, again, I've done a few of these. It's one of the one of the nicer ones that I like. This was gonna be part of a project which never came into fruition. Really cheesy goblin town with Harad list, which never happened. And then a lot of goblin town conversions. Goblin town shaman. There's just some of the things that you can achieve, um, you know, if you put a bit of time into it and a bit of imagination and picking ideas off of, off of other people, etc. So we're going to get straight into the conversion of the captain. Um, so I'll come back in a second once I've got set up. Okay, so before we get started, uh, I just want to show you um, where we're going to cut why we're going to cut it there, etc. Now, Iron Hills Dwarves um, lend themselves really well to a waste swap conversion. And the reason being, I'll just show you on this bannerman because he's stood upright and it's easy to point out. They have this waistband here in the armour. Now, if I cut this dwarf, dwarf, dwarf with an F, um, directly underneath the waistband and cut through nice and straight and do the same. Um, can you see it there? Oh, sorry, get it in camera. Can you see there? And do the same cut on the uh, actual goat itself. When I match the two pieces up, they should line up perfectly. Um, to the point where you could even reuse what you're chopping off each, if that makes sense. So you could put the top half of this, which normally you just put in your bits box, and attach it to the bottom half of this. So you've got like a different pose for your uh, Iron Hills normal infantry which is quite cool. Uh, I've done it a few times, it works quite well. Sometimes a little bit of green stuff work is required because one dwarf might be <laughs> slightly more plump than the other. Uh, but generally it works really well and I think for beginners trying this type of conversion uh, for the first time, having the waistband there, being able to cut along the waistband and having a, you know a visual line to, to follow um, is really, really good. So what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and get my hobby saw and we're going to start cutting things up, so I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've removed my uh, captain from the sprue. Uh, as any of you guys know who've got this pose of the captain, um, he is a multi-part model, so his uh, arm here, holding the spear, is separate, and this arm is a separate piece also which, funnily enough, lends itself really well because if I just get this in shot we're going to cut along the line of his waistband if we cut perfectly through, it kind of cuts through the elbow of the arm holding, sorry, get that in focus so you can see it it's going to cut roughly through the elbow of the arm holding the uh, the reins of the goat so we're, we'll be able to manipulate that um, to line up and work really well So. Let's get on to actually cutting the model. So, if you've not used a hobby saw before, be quite careful because these blades are really, really sharp. Many, 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 many very fine teeth, as you can see. Uh, this blade, uh, I've had it for a long time actually, I do need to invest in a new one, but it's still cutting quite well through resin and uh, fine cast. So, what we're going to do, we're going to line up, like I said, underside of the belt and you want the blade you can obviously move the blade this way to angle you want it to angle to so you when you cut you're going perfectly through and following the line of the belt like so hold it very still don't still don't try and force the saw let the saw cut at its own pace as we can see just following the line now you can stop like I have halfway through just to check you're not going off off line and carry on. I tend to get my initial cuts all the way round 
because then the, the cuts that you previously make when you start cutting how can I put it to go all the way through them cuts will guide the blade down the line that you want so I'm almost through there we go we're here we are through so we we'll discard that bit for now and we're left with this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up the edge of the cut, just get rid of any bits of rough resin using a sharp blade. And I'll go around and I'll do that uh, properly and then we'll come back in a second. So here we are, both parts are cut, um, top and bottom. As you can see, the crest has come off the top of the captain's head. I'll glue that back on after. Uh, that tends to happen when you try to hold things and cut things that are so small. So, first off, we're going to drive fit. And as you could probably see, um, about the well, I said about the elbow before, lining up uh, for him to hold. Yeah, um, The fit is pretty, pretty damned good, <laughs> if I do say so. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a few adjustments there using my Xector knife so that lines up perfect and then I'll show you how to mark up uh, to pin it. So we'll come back in a second. Okay so next stage is kind of lining them up for pinning so roughly drive fit how you want it to sit as you can see I've adjusted the, the arm there to line up, a little bit of green stuff needed. Pre-drilled the top half, what we're going to do is we're going to get some Apologies about that, the camera moved. Um, yeah, so just going to put some paint where the hole is. Offer it up. Press it on. <laughs> the joys of television, as they say. Paint flipping dried up. So, put some paint on there. Give you a rough idea of where to drill. So I'll drill that and we'll come back. So as we can see I've put a pin in the goat. I'm now just going to add some glue to the top half of the captain. Fit that over the protruding pin. Sorry, get it on camera. Line the arm up. And away we go. Bit of activator spray. And we're cooking. That's stuck. So I. So people, uh, I'm not a very happy man, <laughs> I'm having major issues with my camera of late, uh, as some of you know I was filming a Brie bat rep uh, with Benjamin Bowles, um, spent a good couple of hours filming it, it looked awesome, it was a great game, uh, got into editing it and the back end of all the clips were just corrupt and wouldn't upload to, well they wouldn't play on my PC, never mind the, the editing software. Um, and the same thing has just happened again. So I've either got an issue with my memory card or an issue with my camera, I'm not too sure. I hope I find out soon and can rectify it. But basically, the, the, the model's finished pretty much. Um, rather annoyed I couldn't show you in more detail. But I'll just show you what, what you can achieve um, with... You know, sort of minimal effort really. I don't want to sound like, you know, I'm being a bit blasé about it, but you can get a decent finish because um, the captains are so alike to the infantry models, anyway, barring the cloak and a few little sort of decorative things on the, the armour. Um, you, you sort of can get away with murder, but I think that looks pretty good. Uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, so that's going to go to Jay. Uh, just a couple of things to show you what you can achieve. 
with with the conversions just by going a little bit further once you're a bit more confident with green stuff. This is my captain conversion, which I was like really happy with. Just think it looks cool. Looks awesome. And then <clears throat> one of my more recent ones was a dwelling to match the foot dwelling which I have from the Champions Variable, uh, which was picked by HVM. So I tried my best, try and get him in shot, to uh, emulate the <laughs> paint job by HVM Studios, but that guy is just like simply amazing painter. So, you know, from three foot away, it doesn't look too bad. This was um, a broken dwelling that I had. Had no axe, and I made the axe from plastic card. It's yeah, that's a slightly bigger than the than it should be, but it got to the point where I'd started painting and I just couldn't be bothered faffing about with it. So it'll do. It'll be all right. I'm happy with that. It looks cool. A bit more to this conversion, as you can see with the legs, because I've not used the iron hills. I've not just done a waste swap. Uh, maybe in a future video, uh, I'll go into. Um, how to do a conversion like this. Uh, it helps that dwelling was fine cast it's a lot easier to cut and carve. Um, but like, just removing the, um, the Iron Hills goat rider himself, the legs from the um, the goat is a bit fiddly. But yeah, maybe, maybe we'll. Once I sort my camera out, uh, I'm going to get a load more videos coming soon. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you have a go at this conversion. If you do, um, let me know, um, you know, tag me on Facebook, uh, pop it on the top table group and um, yeah, let's see what you can come up with. I'd be, I'd be really pleased to know that people are taking on board um, the tips and sort of maybe it's giving you the, the confidence to have a go. So I'll leave it there. Um, rather frustrated that I couldn't get as much of the video as I wanted to, but I hope uh, it was enough to show you what's what. So I will see you in the next video. Keep on gaming, guys, and take care.